First class tribute they've given me this week in Vegas. You know, I, I came out here way early, and the UFC wasn't going to cover my hotel, but the Trumps, you know, picked up uh, a nice suite over at the Trump Hotel for me. So tell us about New York. You were going to sit with uh, the president, and then uh, and then you didn't. And Dana said that you had somewhere else to be, but on the Candace Owens show, you said that uh, Dana wouldn't let you. Yeah, it, it was unfortunate. You know, the, the only reason that the president of the United States, Donald Trump, went to New York is because he thought me and Mark, Marty Fink Newsman were unifying the titles there. So, because that was the original planned event, we were supposed to headline the Garden. And two months out in his schedule, you know, he put in that he was going to be there. But then Marty Fake Newsman couldn't clear an EPO test, so he couldn't make it to New York. But, you know, the president already put it in his schedule, and so he decided to go. And then when I went to the Trump Tower the day before the fight and had lunch with Don Jr. and Eric Trump, they both told me that, hey, you know, our dad, the president, told us he wants to sit with you at the fights. Could you do that? And I was like, yeah, I would love to. You know, let me just go ask Dana. And I asked Dana, he's like, oh, no, I can't do that. Uh, you're going to have to call the White House and get clearance from the White House to, to be able to do that. And then I asked Don Jr., he's like, he's telling me I have to get clearance from the White House. He's like, dude, I can't even get clearance from the White House. I'm the president's son. I, I, you know, it takes weeks to get clearance from the White House. So it, it's, it's clear that the UFC doesn't want me to get too big and become too big of a star because, you know, it's their brand and, and, and we're just a number here. Colby, it, it feels like you're taking somewhat of a step back from this character you've been putting on. Is that a conscious decision, or now that you've reached the goal of a title shot, you feel, I just don't have to do this anymore? I don't know what everybody keeps talking about this character thing. You know, it's always been me. It's always been real. I just turn it up to 11 now. You know, there's, there's no character about it. It's just me not holding back how I feel and holding back my honest feelings inside. So... You know, if anything, I'm just conserving my energy this week. I'm not going to waste too much emotion. Look who I'm selling a fight with. He's a fucking mute. He's a broomstick. So, you know, it's a joke. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to go out of my way to, to sell this fight. You know, the UFC needs to, to sell this fight. Are you a little bit disappointed in him? Because I think everyone coming into this fight thought, wow, serious grudge match. They're going to be talking loads of shit to each other. And actually, he almost refuses to. It's like he doesn't want to play the game at all. Are you surprised that, that his, that's his reaction? And are you disappointed in it? Uh, you know, I'm not surprised because he knows what's ahead of him now. Now he knows we're getting locked in that octagon on Saturday night whether he likes it or not. So he knows he's going to be embarrassed in front of the whole world. So, you know, there's a reason he doesn't want to talk shit and engage in that and say some things because he knows he's going to fall this weekend. And he just wants to make the fall a little bit less. Do you think there's ever been a point where you've gone a little bit too far? I know that that's the heel game, you know, that's everything about it. But, you know, Glenn Robinson's family have asked you not to mention his name. Do you ever look back and think, OK, probably got the judgment wrong on that one? Not at all. You know, Glenn Robinson, he always wanted the uh, media. He was always looking to become famous, so he should be happy that I made him famous. You know, look at look at what, it, you know, he's, he's a fraud. He's a fake. He, he, he you know, he had, a bunch, he had to file bankruptcy many times on his companies, and, you know, he was screwing people out of a lot of money. He didn't pay Marty Fake Newsman after he won the Ultimate Fighter when the UFC paid him, like, 250 grand. People don't know that story. They need to check more into that. He's not that good of a person. Earlier today, Jorge Masvidal tweeted out seemingly referencing you, saying, oh, the time you cried in his couch and stuff like that. I don't know about you, but when I've fallen out with friends in the past, it hurts. It's not a nice thing. Do you, is there any part of you that wishes this wasn't happening between you and him? Not at all, because it's such an easy paycheck, you know. We used to both be a part of the Easy Money Tour, but now it just came to find out that he's just going to be a part of my Easy Money Tour. I mean, it's an easy paycheck. I don't pay attention to what he's saying, to be honest. Everybody is, is tweeting at me, talking about me this weekend. I'm the man this weekend. I'm, I'm the reason everybody showed up. So, you know, I could care less what journeyman George Masvidal, a.k.a. the street Judas, has to say. After this fight is the Woodley fight, the one that makes the most sense. You and him had the same sort of dynamic as Usman. It's, it's one that should have happened probably, but it didn't. Do you, do you think that's the right one to do next? Nah, Tyquell Woodley's cashed out, and you saw that in the Marty Fake Newsman fight. You know, he's too busy in Hollywood. He's too busy with TMZ. He's a shell of his former self, dude. The guy needs to retire. He's nothing what he used to be back in the day. Who do you see in your sights if it's not Woodley? Yeah, I see uh, GSP in my sights. He, he's been tempting. You know, I seen Fyra Sahabi on Joe Rogan saying that he would come back and fight me. You know, or, or Usman if one of us got hurt. And, you know, there's also the potential kebab fight. You know, I, I, I'm not a big welterweight. You know, I can, I can get down to like 160, 165. So if he wants to do a super fight, we can do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of challenges. I would go up to 185 and fight Israel Adesanya. I know he can't hang with my pace. And, and obviously, you know, I ask the people, since I'm the people's champ, I ask the people which fight they want. They want me to embarrass journeyman George Masvidal next. So I think that's what's appropriate.